So I'm going to talk tonight about little time, lots of love, because I guess that's all of us. Uh, certainly it is in, in my home because my husband is a pastor. Actually, he's just gone to part-time pastoring from the 1st of January because um, of our family needs around us. So he's hopefully going to have a little bit more time and uh, to help to, to love me and to share good times together. And he's very supportive. But we know what it's like to be time short people that want to give lots of love, but phew, life is often very busy. And I found this concept really useful. It's developed by a, a family therapist in America. And if you've got someone there with you, if you're watching this as a couple, I want you to tell each other something nice. I want you to tell each other one little thing you do that makes me feel especially loved is. And, you know, it's often the little things that help us to feel loved. Yes, it's wonderful when we have a big gift and Bernie and I just had our 40th wedding anniversary and he planned everything. It was a big secret for me. And he took me back to the church where we were married and to the hotel we spent our first night in. And he made lots of lovely big plans that were very special. And that's wonderful. But it's also good to have the little things that we do that share love every day. Um, and that can be like making each other a drink. At the end of each day, as many of you know, we share a little piece of chocolate and we have a, a connected moment. And it's those little moments of connection that are actually really precious and really important. And that's what we'll be talking about tonight. So your, invest, your relationship is one of the most significant investments in your life. It really is. It's, the, it's a huge asset. You know, when you are happily married, it does so much for you. Um, when I was in Scotland, the, the doctor who was in charge of all the health in Scotland, um, he's, he was a heart surgeon. And he said whenever he did surgery on someone's heart or was going to, he would make sure that they also had a healthy relationship. And if they didn't, then he would help them find some self-support for that. Because he knew that his patients that had good um, relationships would actually recover quickly. Their hearts would heal quicker because they were in a loving relationship. So it's really a vital part of our life and health and well-being and our spirituality, our happiness, everything. And the more you invest in your relationship, the more likely you are to be happy and the less likely you are to have big conflicts. Of course, this is a generalization because sometimes we can be married to in, in difficult relationships that are really complex and have to deal with all kinds of challenging issues. But on the whole, generally, when we put the effort into relationships, then more comes out of them. It's like putting money into an investment in a bank. And the more you put in, the, the more you can get out. And when you put things in lovingly, then it comes back to you with, with interest and a blessing. I believe God has wired this world so that when we bless others, it blesses us. And we know that when we are kind to others, it has many significant positive impacts on our spiritual well-being, our emotional well-being, our relational well-being, and our health. And so we can see that it's the whole world is wired by God to bless those who bless others so that we can all be uplifted and loved together. And a little warm and intentional effort can go a long way in a relationship. When someone does something kind for us, we can glow for quite a while. And it can save us stress, conflict, time, and money because the more often that we're dropping um, love into the investment bank, our emotional bank, the less we will have conflicts, the less stresses we will have, and it can be a blessing in the long run. So how to be an efficient and effective lover? Well, love is about doing the little things often and well, rather than doing the great big things occasionally. So make regular small investments of love to keep the um, continuity going, to build up a good routine, a good pattern of caring for each other. So most couples will say that they're way too busy to spend quality time together, to go and have a date and to go out for dinner, to go to a movie, even to go for a walk. Oh, they're much too busy to spend time and effort doing things that invest in our relationship. And quite often they'll tell me, oh, we, you know, we can't go away for a weekend because we're just so busy or we can't even go out for dinner in an evening because we're so busy. Uh, and yes, I understand that, but most couples can manage to invest at least 10 minutes a day in their relationship, even when they're not together. Bernie and I have discovered this because quite often we're not together. I'm quite often in another part of the world in another country, but we can still invest in our relationship in 10 minutes a day. 
and because we're worth it. So I'm going to tell you how 10 minutes a day can make a huge difference. So uh, a family therapist who actually is a couple therapist for couples in New York, and most of his clients are very busy, wealthy, high-level executives for huge businesses in New York. And they come to him when their relationships are in trouble. And of course, he, he discovers that most of them are struggling because they don't invest time in their relationship because they're just so busy. They're prioritizing everything else. And they will say, when I've got that next contract, when I've done this, when I've done this study, when I've achieved this, then I'll put some more time into my relationship. But quite often that time doesn't come and their partners are... Uh, frustrated and hurt and alone and struggling. And so he discovered that if these couples had 10 one minute connection scattered throughout the day, it helps them to stay connected, to feel closer, happier, and more hopeful about their relationship. And he said 60 seconds of intentional, warm and positive connection 10 times a day can transform your relationship. A simple prescription for love. Of course, it sounds simple. It's not quite that simple to do, but it's good to know that 10 one minute encounters can really make a difference. So these need to be scattered regularly throughout the day. And Peter Frankel says that it's good to have three moments of connection before you say goodbye in the morning and have a good parting, like a kiss, a hug, a kind word, whatever, when you leave. So maybe when you get up, um, whoever gets up first can make a drink for somebody or even just set the table for breakfast, do something caring. Um, maybe have a kiss, a hug. Bernie and I share a devotion time together that actually is 10 minutes long, but that helps us to connect. Um, we, so it's one of our good connection points before we leave in the morning. And then four moments throughout the day, say two in the morning, two in the afternoon, whatever works for you. And then three in the evening, including a warm welcome when you meet, when you first come home. And of course, if you add extra connections, that's not going to do any harm. And if you make them a bit longer than a minute, that's not going to hurt either. And I'll tell you towards the end why this works, why it's so um, helpful and what's actually going on in your brain and in your heart and in your relationship when you do this. So if you like, um, and you can do this at some other time, and not everyone has a schedule and a life where they can do this. But if you have a fairly regular life, you can actually make some kind of basic connection plan for your relationship. And um, we have an hour sheet that we, we make and share, but you just can just break up the day into hours and make a plan that works for your shared routine. So it might say 6.30, get up, make my wife a cup of tea or my husband a cup of tea. Um, then do something before you leave, maybe a um, short moment of worship or a prayer for each other, and then have a nice party when you leave, a kiss, a hug, some kind words, and then allow for flexibility during the day because, you know, work is unpredictable. And remember, you can always add extra spontaneity and put an extra moment in here or there, and that's not going to hurt anything. But the importance of having a routine, if that's how your life works, means that it can help you to stay on track. There's a reminder. You can even set reminder on your phone, on your diary, whatever it is, to remind you, hey, it's time for a one minute connection with my with my partner. And I'll give you some ideas about what you can do in that minute if you're short of them. And if things don't go to plan, if someone misses a moment, don't panic. Life happens. Um, just take the opportunity to send a nice message yourself, um, send a little WhatsApp message or share a nice photograph or a selfie or maybe something funny you found on the internet or a nice caring comment or a gratitude or a moment of wonder that you've had. Just share it anyway because that will bless the other person and make the most of the next time you can connect and know that even when you are doing it, it's good for you. Even if the other person isn't available to receive it right then, they will receive it. And that can be a blessing when they receive it. So enjoy the moments that do happen and don't fuss if something, if you don't get 10 in, in a day, it's not a big deal. Um, let it go. Um, don't fret about anything. Just be aware that the more often you have these one minute connections, then it can actually strengthen your relationship and build your experience of love together, even when you're really busy. Or try this. So, you know, I'm sure many of us pick up our phone to check our social media account or maybe play a game or 
do a bit of online shopping during the day, whatever it is, watch the news. Um, decide that for one of those things, okay, every time before I read the news, I will pause and for one minute and I will send something nice to my partner and let them know that I care because they're more important than the news or the online shopping or whatever else you're going to do. So you can just decide, okay, whenever I do this, I'm going to send something loving first so that you intentionally prioritize what's really most important to you, the relationship, not the, the game, the news, or what you want to buy online. So here's a few little ideas, and I'm going to expand on these later on in the presentation. So you can give some focused attention to the other person, just concentrate on them. Think about their life, what they need, listen to them, um, even just gaze into their eyes um, and give them some focused attention. Um, try gazing into each other's eyes for one minute. You know, we used to do some of these things when we were dating and kind of after 40 years, we don't do it quite so much. Um, but we can still go back there and be reminded, express some appreciation. Thank you for, for emptying the dishwasher this morning. It was so nice to come down to everything sorted out. Thank you for setting the table or for making me uh, a nice drink or packing something into my lunchbox or filling the car with fuel, whatever. Um, expressing gratitude is really important um, in, in a loving relationship. It lowers our conflicts and it makes both of us feel good when we say thank you for something. Tell them how special they are to you or show them how special they are. So think about how you might let them know that they are precious to you. Scatter kindness, the more kind that we are to each other, then the more loved we feel. And often when couples come to me and they're struggling, they have forgotten to be kind to one another. It's slowly eroded. And rather than be kind, they're being a bit nasty to each other or, or hurting each other. Be helpful. That's a really lovely way to do some connection and caring. And so do something unexpectedly helpful for the other person. Make them laugh. I have a friend and they say, a day that I don't make my spouse laugh is a day wasted. So that can be one of your moments. Try and find something to make them laugh. Find a funny joke to share or say something crazy. Dress up crazy, do something mad. Soothe each other. So calm each other down. It might be giving a gentle back rub or a hand massage or just stroking their hair or whatever it is, pouring them a hot bath, making them a nice cup of tea. Experience moments of joy, just, you know, happiness for no particular reason, just finding something to feel joyful about um, or praise God or, or something that gives you joy and share wonder. And that's just looking at something in nature and going, wow, like the moon at night or icicles in the snow or the first flowers that are trying to poke through the ground, whatever it is, those moments of wonder can really bring us together. So here are some ways to give some focused attention. Tell each other about the happiest moment in your day and listen to each other. Listening is really important. So ask questions. And if you struggle with this, you can get actually packs of questions for couples that have some really interesting questions to ask. You might find lists on the internet. Um, the Danish Union has made a list of couple questions and I, I have it and I can send it as an email if anyone asks. So you know, find out more about each other by asking things like, you know, if you had a thousand pounds, what would you spend it on? Um, or if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? And find out more about each other because you might not know that your spouse wants to go to Bali or climb the Himalayas or something. Gaze into each other's eyes for a minute or run into each other's arms when you meet. My husband likes to run, um, so he runs faster than me, so he gets to me first. But we sometimes crazily do this when I come back from one of my trips and pretend we're doing some kind of slow romantic movie where the couple runs into each other's arms. Yes, it's a bit crazy, but it's fun. Heartfelt appreciation. So you might say, I really appreciate you because I'm so glad I'm married to you. I really appreciate you because you do this. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Even thank you so much for going to work today because, you know, what you do makes such a big difference to our family. So find something to say thank you for as often as possible because it really does make you feel good, make you feel connected, make you feel valued and less resentful. 
find fun ways to say thank you. Put a note in a note in a lunchbox or use your lipstick to write on the mirror. If you don't have lipstick, then use one of those wipe off pens and just write a message somewhere or have a little um, blackboard somewhere in your kitchen where you write fun things and just um, share appreciation in a fun kind of way or make a little picture or a, a, um, a gif or whatever it is, those little kind of video things that you can just share and send. Uh, I know you can use AI to make little pictures. I have no idea how to do that, but be creative about how you share your gratitude because it really does bring joy to the other person and make them feel loved. Let them know they're precious. Tell your partner how special they are to you in a fun and creative way. It might be that you get a little little cupcake like this and put some sparklers in it. That would be a crazy thing to do. Um, send them a bunch of flowers at work or a box of chocolates at work or whatever it is, a box of brownies to let them know that they're precious to you. You make some photographs or gifts or other tangible signs to show you value your relationship. So a nice photo frame with a lovely message, like I'm glad I'm married to you, you're amazing and whatever on the photo and have that on your desk at work or at home or on a key ring can be a way to let them know they're precious. Celebrate their special moments, even tiny successes. Have little things you can celebrate in really simple ways. Like this, this here is just cupcakes, candles, some chocolates and a little card or something. It doesn't have to be very much. So keep it as simple as possible because the simpler it is, the more likely you are to repeat it. Um, but have some little extra things up your sleeve for every now and then. And make a list of all of these ideas, a list of all the things you can do to share love in one moment so that you're not short of ideas. And it doesn't matter if you repeat them. I mean, we do our chocolate moment at the end of every day, and it's still as special as it was when we first came up with it. When we have these moments about 10 o'clock at night, where one of us will say it's time for a chocolate moment, and the other one will always say, yes, I'm sure it is. And we have a whole drawer full of chocolate, and we choose one and we share it together. And, um, and then we just check in about the day. And that's just a really special, simple moment um, it doesn't take much effort except filling up the chocolate drawer, which is always a joy. And uh, and yet we have that little routine, that little um, kind of ritual that helps us to stay connected very easily. And even when I'm away from home, I take chocolates with me and we have a connection online and we'll share chocolates together, even though we're thousands of miles apart. You can tell them, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad I'm married to you. I'm so glad you're my husband, I'm your wife, whatever. Um, being your partner gives me so much joy. I'm so glad I married you. These things can be really precious things to say. Obviously, you know, they need to be what you really think and feel. Um, but quite often when we start to do kind things for the other, even if we don't feel like it, our heart will catch up with it. Because when we do kind things, even when we struggle to do kind things, um, oxytocin can be released in us and the other person, which is the thing that helps to bond us and helps us to experience love in the relationship. And that's actually what all these little moments are about, is giving oxytocin boosts, which help us to feel bonded and connected. <clears throat> so do small kind things for the other person whenever you can. Um, whatever their favorite drink is, a little treat, a smile, a surprise kindness, do something that's on their to-do list that they hate, give them a hand massage. And maybe as I'm talking, you have ideas of your own and you can pop them in the chat so we can find out what you do for your one minute wonders, your one minute moments of love and share ideas because it's nice to have a whole lot of ideas to draw from. S tell them, you know, when you did that, I felt especially loved by you. That was really, that really touched my heart. And it can often be something really simple. It could be, you know, when you went out and bought a book that I've been trying to find and you found it somewhere and you bought it home and gave it to me, that was so special. Um, when you bought me a fair pair of my favorite socks um, and tucked them into my suitcase when I was traveling, that made me feel really special. The kinds of affection I enjoy the most are, so think about your love languages. What are they? The love languages of your partner. Um, so there's physical affection, like hugs. There's kind words, thoughtful gifts, caring acts, and spending special time together. And these are the five main way ways that we experience love, 
says Gary Chapman. And so think of moments of kindness and choose the ones you think that your partner will appreciate the most and make a list of all the little things that you can do. Um, one of the things that I like is little tiny thoughtful gifts. And Bernie's not much of a gift giver. He has a different love language. But there's some special things he does in the year, like finding me the first branch of lilacs somewhere growing wild. And he will cut the first branch and bring it home to me. That's one of his thoughtful rituals in the spring. And it's a gift that doesn't cost anything, but a little bit of thought. And he'll bring wildflowers home and put them in a little jar for me or something. And it just says, I was thinking about you. And that's what is special. Someone is thinking about you with love and putting that love into action. So know what soothes each other. When you had a stressful day, know what's going to comfort them. It might be that you give them a few moments of quiet when they come home so they can just gather themselves. It can be giving them a big hug, listening to the, their day, talking together, making their favorite dinner, going for a walk and talking as you walk, doing something fun. Sometimes the best distraction is just playing a crazy game or watching a funny video clip of crazy animals or something. It doesn't have to be long. But it's important to listen to the story of each other's days with a bit of warmth and curiosity. So don't just hear the story, but ask a question that shows you want to hear more. And that feels special. That says, you're not just listening to me because it's your duty. You're listening to me and you're curious. You want to know more about my life. And that's an extra kind of level of bonding that comes there. Make a treat for them. Um, and if you're going through a really hard time, make a comfort menu which is a list of all the things that bring you comfort in the tough time. And, and whenever you feel sad or down, choose something on the comfort menu and do that for each other. Support and help can be brilliant. Just, you know, one minute of help here or there, someone who's picked something up and put it away or tidied something or um, cleaned up after a mess. Anticipate when help is needed and be ready and available to be involved for a few minutes. Notice what needs to be done and say, here, let me do that for you, or can I help with this? Or I've got one minute or more likely, hopefully five minutes or 10 minutes to do something helpful. What's the best thing I can do for you in those few moments? Um, and just be willing to do whatever is needed by your, your partner to help them. So it can be clearing the table, putting things away, taking laundry to the bedroom, pumping up the tires on the car, um, but those little times of support and help can be really um, bonding and share love. Each time you leave a room, do one thing to make it tidier. It takes a moment, but it really helps the house to stay tidy. And I think Gabor Mihalec did some research during the pandemic and found that couples who kept their home tidy and organized and made it look lovely um, had a good effect on their relationship as well. It wasn't just a nice house. It actually was a blessing to their relationship and their, their experience of love. So we can also spend one minute just watching a funny, crazy YouTube clip. Um, animals like meerkats or other things can be quite funny, monkeys. Um, I even saw a clip of giraffes yesterday and they look kind of funny too. So just watch something that doesn't take long um, that's quite funny, cats, dogs doing crazy things in the house. There's loads of those on, on YouTube. And sometimes I will get an email and it says, here, there's 25 of the best funny cat videos from the last week, whatever. And it's quite fun to go through those and see them and have a good giggle together. You can buy funny cards for each other. So sometimes I look out for a funny card to buy Bernie, but quite often I cheat. And when I'm in a card shop buying a birthday card, I will go and look for a funny card to share with Bernie. And I'll just take a photograph of it, one of the outside, one of the inside, if there is something on the inside, and then send him the photograph and say, here, have a giggle. This is funny. This is for you. You can play hide and seek um, in the house and just do something a bit zany and have a, a lingering kiss when you find each other. Try try kissing for a minute and set a timer and see how long it takes. <laughs> see how long you can keep your kiss going. Take it in turns to name an animal and then kiss each other as if you were monkeys, lions, crocodiles, butterflies, giraffes. We used to do this with our children and they used to love it when they were kids, but it's still a crazy fun thing to do as a couple. If 
you like to do this sort of thing. So we just try and um, kiss as if we were crocodiles or butterflies or giraffes, and um, it's quite a laugh. There are some really funny games called Minute to Win It on the internet, which are very short because it says Minute to Win It in the name. And they're quite often from America, and they'll have really funny little challenges to do in one minute that you can do together for a laugh. And one of them, for example, is you put your head back and you put a chocolate biscuit on your forehead and you have to use just your face to wiggle that biscuit um, across your face and, and into your mouth without dropping it on the floor. And it's very funny to take a little video of each other doing that and then destroy the video afterwards because it's kind of weird and there's chocolate all over their face. But it can be fun to do some of those minute to win it games just to have a little quick, crazy challenge. One minute soothing when we've had a, a stressful day is a lingering hug, a hot drink, a long kiss, blowing bubbles, a back rub, some loving words, just lighting a candle together. We often just light a candle and pause and just look at the flickering flame and find that really calming and just talk and say things about the day together. Share a chocolate. We often share one chocolate and cut it in half. See who can make their piece last the longest. Um, because if chocolate's so special, you don't just want to gobble it up. You want to savor every last drop of chocolate. Or hold hands and pray silently for each other. <clears throat> Sometimes, even in, in Christian couples, we struggle to know quite how to pray for each other. So one thing you can do is just say, today I'd like you to pray about this and share that with each other. Then just hold hands, pray for each other. After one minute, give a squeeze and that's amen. And then you then you part again and you feel like you've been prayed for. You feel like you've connected and you've supported each other. And then you can think about that prayer also throughout the day. <clears throat> one minute of joy. So, Okay, you can dance to your favorite song. And yes, it's okay to dance with your spouse. You can sing loudly to a lively song or sing out your favorite song that you, you um, enjoyed when you were going out together or that means something to you. Find something to celebrate in your day. Like what was the best moment in the day? Whatever it was, and just celebrate that and find a, a way to celebrate it. Drink something nice or um, sing a crazy song about it. Give your partner an imaginary award for something they do well. So here, this is an award for you. I want to give you this award. It looks like this and because, and it's because you do this. And I'm so proud of how you do that. Like I would give Bernie a huge big trophy like you get at a Grand Prix and say, I'm giving you this because you drive safely. And I'm glad you don't drive at 300 miles an hour or whatever it is. I'm glad you drive safely. And I'm giving you this amazing award because I feel safe in the car with you. Share a happy memory or exchange a happy photo. And just this last couple of weeks, I made a photo book of a walk that Bernie and I did. We walked right across England. It was 200 miles in 13 days. And we took some photographs and I made it into a photo book and had it printed so that we can look at it from time to time and relive those memories. And you can go back through your phone and find a happy memory and just tell each other, this was a really happy memory because, and share what you remember. And that can be a very simple way. And even if you're not together, you can send the photo and say, do you remember this? Wasn't that fun? And that can be a sparky moment of connection as well. Bernie and I like to experience wonder as well, to find things in nature that fill us with wonder and then show each other what we found. I love to take pictures of, of flowers. Bernie enjoys birds. Um, we love to go and look at the sky at night, the moon, the stars. To um, Sometimes we lie in the summer on a blanket under the stars with some hot chocolate and try and name the constellations or look out for the the space station that flies around in the sky. Sometimes we see that. Watch a short nature video clip of a sea otter or a dolphin or a butterfly. So even if you can't get out the house and it's cold and miserable and there's snow everywhere or whatever, or it's raining, um, find a, a lovely nature video of David Attenborough or some special amazing piece of nature and just watch it together and go, wow, that's amazing. God did a great job there or drive to a viewpoint and just watch the sunset over the horizon and just hold hands while you watch. 
um, or just watch from your window. We're really fortunate in our house that the sun rises on one side in the back of the house and sets at the front of the house and we can watch the sunset and sunrise right from the comfort of our home. So, you know, sometimes we get a bit stuck. So make yourself a one minute kit, perhaps. So a basket or a box or something and put in it little things that you can use for your one minute moments of connection. So you might put in there some candles and um, some special chocolates, some hot chocolate drink mixes or whatever it is you like to drink some sparklers and matches, some massage oil, some heart-shaped sticky notes, feathers, nice bath bubbles, maybe a book of love quotes or a funny book about love or relationships to make you laugh, some of your favorite treats, book of cartoons. And we particularly like cartoons online by a guy called Reverend Fun. So that's Reverend, like um, a vicar in England, Fun. And this guy, Reverend Fun, I don't know what his real name was. He drew an amazing cartoon every day for years. And, and they're up on the internet. And they're very funny cartoons from Bible stories or things that happen in church or life. Um, and they're very amusing usually. So we find those and share them with each other and just have a good laugh. Or a book of love poetry that you can read to each other. You don't have to write your own love poems. You can buy a book and choose the best bits and have a good laugh about them and say how you would change the words or something. Maybe you can write a love poem. It doesn't have to rhyme, just the words that you think or feel about your partner and pop that into a WhatsApp message. You can learn to write haiku, which is doesn't need many, many words. It's really a couple of sentences or less. And if you learn how to write a, a haiku, um, then you can make a short poem very easily. Have some luxury paper and pens to write special messages to each other. Maybe you have a playlist of your favorite music or some CDs or whatever. Um, buy yourself a couple question card set or just find them on the internet and print them off and ask them for, ask them for each other. Um, maybe even get some face and body paints and play around with those. Maybe some puzzles that you like to do or a cookie baking kit or a a phone or a camera for taking crazy funny selfies together. So those are some ideas for how you can have one minute or maybe slightly longer connections with each other in your busy day. And it's a really important um, concept, This these 10 one minute wonders, because there's something that like I call the compassion cycle is that when we feel cared for by somebody, what gets released in our brain is say oxytocin, dopamine, like things that help us to feel really good, happy. Oxytocin helps us to bond. Um, it's a bonding hormone. And, um, and so when we feel cared for, we have this nice glow and that's that hormone being released in us. And when this is released in us, we're much more able to listen to the other person, to show empathy and love for them and to be compassionate so it helps us to have better, healthier, happier, more loving relationships. So say, say Bernie cares for me. These lovely hormones come into my brain, into my body. I have a nice glow. I'm better able to listen to him, be empathic towards him and compassionate. So I can then care better for him. And then when I'm caring for him, these lovely things get released into his brain and he's better able to care for me. And we have this sort of cycle of caring where we're each caring for each other and then feeding that back and maybe doing something together to share that experience of care. And the reverse happens if we don't feel cared for. We have stress hormones that get released that make us really grumpy. They stop us being empathic. They stop us listening. They kind of shut our brains down. So all we think about is ourself and we react, we retaliate, we hurt. That makes the other person feel stressed and they start to react and hurt. And that's like a vicious cycle or a painful cycle, a distress cycle. But when we start to do these one minute caring things, we build up this compassion cycle that's going on in our relationship. And I think how this works, and this is just my take on it, because the research has been done to show this helps couples stay together, bonded, feeling good, feeling loved, feeling that they are um, 
you know, having a great having a great relationship, even when they're very busy, when they do these 10 one minute wonders. And I kind of think it's because each of these things stimulates the oxytocin and that we get a shot of that. And then, you know, over time it might like dip a bit. And then when they do the next thing, you get another shot and it lifts you up again. And so you're keeping the oxytocin level raised throughout the day. And that gives you a sense of well-being, a sense of feeling loved and wanting to love the other person. And you are blessing each other in that kind of relationship. Of course, this, this is ideal. And, you know, we don't always have these 10 one minute connections in the day. But this is the science of how these one, these one minute wonders, these little moments, the drops of love in the relationship can help to keep us bonded, happy, experiencing love and, and um, having the benefit of that. So as you're doing these things um, throughout the day, not only are we doing these things intentionally, but every time we think about, okay, so what can I do next for one minute that's going to bless Bernie, make him feel loved, um, enhance our relationship? My thinking is changed. My thinking is focusing on, on him. What can I do that will bring him joy, help him to feel loved? And so it helps to develop loving, compassionate thinking in our mind. And also when we're experiencing it the other way, the more often the other person shows love to us and does these things, um, we, we feel good too. So it's helping us to think differently, to experience something different in our relationship, to start focusing on the little things that we can do that can help to build those bonds and deepen the experience of love and the relationship for both of you. And even if you're not busy, then ensuring that we're making these connections throughout the day is a really healthy thing for us to do. And being aware that just one minute can make a difference. Those small things done well, done regularly, can create a really rich experience of being loved. It changes the whole atmosphere in the relationship, the perspective on the relationship. And that's why when Peter Frankel was working with these busy couples and got them to do this, he found it transformed their relationships. They went from being about to divorce each other to start to rebuild a sense of love and togetherness and joy and, and make the connection again that was so powerful to re-spark. So it, make the most of the moment is what I would say any moment that you have and just think, pause and think, okay, what can I do to show love to the other person? And it may be that they're not really doing it back for you to begin with. Um, but every time we do it, it changes us and it changes them a little bit. And sometimes people will catch on after a while when they feel how good it is, they'll start doing things too. Um, and, um, you know, sadly, there are some times and some people who will never quite get this. And we have to understand that sometimes we drop love into their lives anyway, knowing they're not quite going to make the same sense of it as us. But we want to let them know that we care. So these are just some ideas that um, I thought I would share with you at the beginning of the year when things are busy and help you to see that the small things that we do can actually be such a blessing for each other and for our relationships because um, it's the little moments that really count and that really matter. So I hope that you found something in those ideas today that you thought, oh yes, that's not too difficult. You know, I could do that. Um, and why don't I just try this? So I never thought about doing that. So I hope you have something that you took away there that you could start to put into your relationship. And if you have um, any ideas that you do in your relationship that you think, oh, we do this one minute thing that doesn't take long. Maybe others would like it. Just pop that into the chat so that we can all benefit, benefit from it. And what I would say to do is to go away and um, no matter what, just try and pause and write a list of at least 20 things you can do in one minute that will share love with your partner and just start doing them um, as often as you can, even if it's only once a day, just start there and then build up from that and just see what difference it makes. Imagine you are having an experiment and imagine that each one of these one minute wonders is like having a, maybe like a love tablet, a love pill. Um, and uh, and see what effect that's having on the relationship when you start to do 
these loving things, even if the other person doesn't even know that you're doing them. So those are some ideas to start your year. I hope that was a blessing for you. And I'm going to pray now and then we'll open up for some questions, some ideas, some suggestions, if you wish. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for the blessing of love and relationships. And relationships can be really challenging at times because we're also very different, we're also very busy. We have so many priorities and sometimes we let our relationships drop lower in the pile of our priorities than they should be. And I pray that you will help each person here to lift up their relationship and start to do the loving kind things or more of the loving kind things and be aware of how each one of those moments, each one of those blessings can be something that can help to lift the relationship, to help it to bond again, to bring sparkles into relationship. And even relationships that are good can be extra blessed by thinking about doing these one minute things intentionally, because the more intentional we are about loving each other, then the more loved we will feel. And we thank you that you do more than these 10 one a minute wonders a day for us, that you're doing hundreds of thousands of moments of wonder every day in our lives. Every, every second you're doing something to show us your love and help us to tune our minds to be aware of that, that this is your model for love, pouring love into our lives one moment at a time so that we can be inspired to pour love into other people's lives one moment at a time. So thank you for your example. Help us to follow it wherever we are and wherever is a good place to start in our lives so that we can make a difference and show your love to each other in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>